um, to um, communities where we have a dearth of care, um, looking at our child care resource and referral um, system and building greater capacity there in the areas where we know we've really had success and being able to support providers, um, uh, support for strengthening our um, uh, uh, licensing program, again, aligned to um, issues of child and safety um, and protection, I'm thinking about um, access specifically for um, families um, uh, who, um, you know, are maybe currently, who really require more tailored strategies in terms of getting support through ERDC, so conversations about um, full-time students, families who require care during non-traditional hours. So those are um, really, I think, a lot of what the working group has talked about this summer, and um, we are work, you know, where we are really seeing kind of the alignment of, of, of these new dollars sort of in a plan would really be to um, look at, you know, resources for CCRNR, resources for licensing, um, capa capacity in the licensing division, um, uh, um, you know, investments um, in ERDC. Um, I'll let um, Kim and others uh, uh, kind of share more details on that and then starting to um, really pilot the sort of coordinated strategies of uh, building a supply of infant and toddler care, so financial incentives or um, professional learning and development um, and um, investments in equipment and resources and materials to help providers care for caring for infants and toddlers who are um, serving low-income families is the direction we're kind of going with the with the proposal for eBoard, which we're working to finalize as we speak, um, because we will just have a couple weeks before we'll be presenting on that. But I know there's been um, Abby, Eva, Martha, Sue, anything you want to add about that working group or that process? And yeah, I'm wondering, Kim. Kim, yeah. Yeah, you're a pretty key part yeah. of it. <laughs> um, certainly the ERDC piece of that work group. I think, um, I think we're really looking at um, multiple strategies for ERDC. I think the one that probably has the most promise is really looking at um, contracted slots to try to uh, increase the supply. And I think that um, we also are looking at the affordability angle and have a few challenges just because we're in the middle of an IT upgrade and uh, but the, uh, the affordability piece, we're looking at both the co-payment and you know, the maximum, like potentially putting a cap on the, the maximum amount of, of, of um, someone's income that would be going towards childcare. Um, certainly looking at the rate reimbursement for ERDC, the maximums, you know, for the, again, the supply and affordability so parents are not paying in addition to the co-pay you know, even more of the, the cost of that care. We're looking at um, potentially helping with, uh, like the enrollment fees that some centers have um, for kids and being able to cover that for families. Um, we're looking at using other funds to help with unemployed parents for a period of time and covering that child care. So I think we're trying to as many rocks as we can. And you mentioned the IT conversion at DHS, and how does that impact the CRDC conversation? Well, fairly significantly. So uh, at DHS, we are going through um, really a replacement of Replacement is the wrong technical word, so I'm just going to put that out there. But um, we're we're upgrading the software that we use to um, both manage all of the benefit programs, but also for Oregonians to be able to apply for all of the the kind of social service benefits with one online application. Um, currently, Medicaid applications are are processed in one venue, um, cash, child care, SNAP benefits are processed in another. These will all come together for both um, families as well as the senior and disabled population. And so where we are in the, the IT part of the process is that um, we are entering what's called code freeze, meaning that we basically can't change any policies 
um, because they all have now an impact on the IT system and, and we're in the final um, stages of testing. We've finished the development, we're now in the testing process, um, and then we'll be in the piloting and rolling out of the new software. So this, this will change every caseworker's uh, work on a daily basis as well as um, how Oregonians can access us.